So as cases climb again into the fall, and as earnings season picks up with tons of big name reports coming out this week, and as stimulus talks continue to not have any sign of passing, many are returning back here with one simple question. And that question is what? What, Charlie, are the top three stocks for this week? Well, in this video, we're going to be talking about the top three stocks for this week. But first, we must talk about last week. What happened last week, Charlie? Well, last week we spoke about Snap. Now, Snap was due for an earnings call, and we spoke about how it tends to react massively to earnings. And it did indeed react massively, up about 55% after the earnings were released. And to be honest, this was one of the most fun earnings plays we've had all year. Next, we spoke about INTC. Intel and how they were reporting earnings on Thursday. I said in that video that we wanted a pre-anticipatory run and then we wanted it to get beat down from the uptrend so that we'd be able to scout a better deal. And that is more or less what happened. We got some pre-anticipatory running and then upon earnings release, INTC got beat down like a rabid dog. Lastly, Tesla. Now we spoke about how Tesla was due for an earnings call and my thought process on Tesla at the time was that because of record breaking deliveries that we'd see another bullish Tesla earnings report at least in terms of revenue because their deliveries were up. More deliveries means more revenue. And Tesla did indeed get a great earnings report, beating revenue 39% year over year, making even this Pomeranian in the advertisement behind the page excited. But regardless of the floofy dog's excitement, well, Tesla's actual reaction was fairly choppy. Also, there were other plays in the daily morning briefings that we put out for ZipTraderU members, like SQBG, ASTC, ZDGE, and of course Pinterest. These all ran up massively this week after we briefed on them as well. And by the way, if you think our morning briefings would be helpful to you, you can get them by joining us at ZipTraderU, which is linked below with, of course, a coupon code that will get you $50 off. But let me warn you, ZipTraderU does have a one-time fee. But in return, you will get lifetime access to the program, the chat room, and all of the morning briefings. Okay, folks, well, enough with the recaps. In this video, we're going to be talking about the top three stocks for this week. But first, I have to warn you, so many of you are trading like philanthropists. I think it's because traders just have such kind hearts that you just want to donate money to the market. But when it comes to the stock market, philanthropy is not acceptable. I know people always say, you should be a philanthropist, you need to be generous. When we grow up, everyone says, you should be generous, you should share your money. But trust me, folks, when it comes to the stock market, the stock market doesn't need your money. Simply donating money to the market via losses is stupidity. And how do you stop donating to the market? Well, by having a clear plan. By not buying something randomly just because you feel like it or because it feels like it's going up. By being intentional with your trading and by being picky with your setups, aka trading like a spoiled brat. Well, anyways, before we get into it, the only thing that I ask in return for this video is that you hit that ravishing like button. Okay, so first we are entering the final stretch before the election, and cases are rallying to all-time highs. In fact, if you had invested in the virus and just simply held through the dip, you'd now be sitting quite pretty. And with all of these things in the forefront, I find it really hard to believe we don't see a run in fear or a sell-off on the broader market of some kind this week. And I know that is a broad statement, but let me give you some context. If you look at the 2016 election, massive increase in the fear index. If you look at the beginning of the crisis. Massive increase. If you look at even Trump getting the virus a few weeks ago, massive spike. But there is one thing that the market hates, and that is uncertainty. And I am of the opinion that there is no way that we don't see at least one massive spike in UVXY, or at least a pushback on the broader market that causes one of our shorting funds to go up like SPXS, or S triple Q. And I'm not even going to include these in the top stocks count for this video, but be aware that there is opportunity here with UVXY, SPXS, and S triple Q. It's just a matter of time. The market will not be able to weather the storm of uncertainty without giving in at least on a few days to one of these funds. Now Chegg will be reporting earnings after close on Monday. Chegg is up something like 128% on the year, which is a valuation that does make me want to vomit. But hear me out. Chegg is an online homework helping website. It gives students extra guidance in understanding their homework. And let's be real, with so many kids staying at home, 
they aren't getting the same level of one-on-one -on -one time that they need, and tutoring sites like Chegg are going to continue to be much, much more valuable. And with cases increasing again, it'll be easy for Chegg to make a big argument that they're going to continue seeing a COVID boost in students for the foreseeable future. But it's also true that Chegg is now attacking more international markets, with more than half of their marketing spending increase being spent on global markets. And I used Chegg when I was in college and in high school. And to be frank, the name recognition amongst my generation is quite high. And during this crisis, it's ballooned in revenue. And this is a company that had been solidly growing in revenue since years before the pandemic. And I have no doubt that after the pandemic is over, it'll be able to use its newfound exposure to continue trading forward. But yes, this is one of those plays where it's trading pretty damn high. But I think that the name recognition and market share of Chegg makes this a great opportunity, regardless of how earnings go. If investors set their expectations too high and the share price gets beat down, I'd be shocked to see it not recover shortly after. And if earnings blow expectations out of the park, I have no doubt that this would be able to run past all-time highs. Okay, next, Carvana. Carvana will be having their earnings call on Thursday after close. And this is one of those companies that quite frankly loves to react to earnings and loves to overreact to everything. We had this massive reaction to earnings in early August when Carvana reported a 27% better than expected earnings beat. And then we had this beat down in early September as the market slid and took Carvana with it. Now Carvana is the company known for its car vending machines and efficient online buying experience. Their touchless and automated car buying has been in a boom due to the pandemic and also due to a rise in used car valuations. And it is widely expected that we see a beat on earnings. Yet the price had taken a hit towards the end of last week, giving us some newfound upside. Again though, the problem with these plays is that the valuations are just so damn high. But still, high or not, these have the history of reacting to earnings. I think that with a great earnings report and newfound fear of cases spreading, with that I think we'll likely see some more upside realized in Carvana. Okay, so after Snap's great earnings last week, Pinterest has charged ahead. Investors that saw Snap's 55% run after earnings are now anticipating the pin's earnings report. And Pinterest last quarter had taken multiple routes to try to boost user engagement, such as increasing the discoverability of products, and as a result is expected to have increased the conversion of product purchases this quarter. They've also expanded into other countries like UK, Canada, Kangaroo Land, Singapore, India, and New Zealand where it is projected to have done quite well. And they've also been on a steady uptrend with new users, with Goldman Sachs projecting that Pinterest has had some strong user growth through the third quarter based on app download data and prospects for continued monetization improvement. But that being said, Pinterest has set the bar high and positive news is certainly already factored in to some extent. But as Snapchat showed, that doesn't necessarily matter. It can still outperform. And it's actually fairly interesting how you can frame some of these opportunities. One person could look at this and say, hey, this is really, really, really overvalued. And another person could look at this and say, hey, look at the momentum. This momentum is insane. As we go up to earnings, maybe it's going to just keep going and pick up more price strength. And obviously I've always been more pessimistic with these callouts just because I see what happens. People People tend to overhype things and then they get beat down immediately. So you have to, have to, have to look at this with a clear head. Okay, and lastly, a lovely bonus, AMD. AMD has been on this massive tear, this massive tear since earlier in the year when it ran up to $55 to $94 in a very short time span. And it's been a huge beneficiary of the fact that industry giant Intel delayed their next generation chip while AMD pushed forward causing AMD to run massively at the same time that Intel dipped massively. And if you look at Intel and AMD charts together, they almost look inversely related. It's hilarious. But anyways, Intel trashed on earnings last week, and many are now speculating that this is the opportunity for AMD to pick up steam once again as earnings come out this week. Now, I'm not necessarily buying into that analysis, but I'll give you two different scenarios. The way that I'm approaching this is number one. If it gets a beatdown on earnings, I'll certainly buy the dip, as almost every single time historically AMD has dipped, it has always been a good time to buy to recovery. And number two, if it runs up in momentum, I'll certainly be playing it to all-time highs. So we have two scenarios, we have two win-win situations, if anyone happens, hey, hey, opportunity to play off of. Okay, folks, well, there you have it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us in the comment section below, or join us on Zip Trader Circle. By the way, if you think our morning briefings would be helpful to you, you can get them by joining us at ZipTraderU, which is linked below with, of course, a coupon code that will get you $50 off. But let me warn you, ZipTraderU does have a one-time fee. But in return, you will get lifetime access to the program, the chat room, and all of the morning briefings. 
But the truth is that I don't think that Zip Trader U is worth paying for if you aren't going to complete it as designed. If I was somebody looking to do this program, you better bet that I'd be doing all of the lessons probably multiple times, that I'd be answering all of the quiz questions, that I'd be participating in the private chat every single day, and of course I'd be practicing relentlessly and I'd be keeping up to date with the morning briefings. And you better bet that I'd be taking advantage of that lifetime access for as long as I possibly needed, so that I can get the most bang for my buck. Casually put, I would want to get my money's worth out of ZipTrader U. So, I expect the same from you. Don't join us unless you're willing to get your money's worth out of it. And of course, if you are broker curious, Webull is actually giving three free stocks now if you sign up and deposit with their commission-free broker linked below. So if you are wondering what broker to trade with, they are a great place to start. And three stocks is actually pretty impressive because they can be valued up to this amount. But anyways, enough with that. Have a great day, folks, and I'll see you in the next video.